Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Welcome back to Costco. Now that we've snagged the biggest deals on the clinical presentation of hypercalcemia, it's time to venture into the warehouse where we'll unpack the workup and differential. Okay, so your patient has high serum calcium. What do you do next? Well, our supervisor here is rechecking inventory to remind you of the very first step. Recheck the calcium levels, specifically total and ionized calcium. While I appreciate his meticulousness for dairy products, that same attention to detail doesn't apply when it comes to him remembering names. That's why he's carrying around an employee album, a handy reminder of who's who around here, and to order albumin, which is used to calculate the total corrected calcium. Remember to add 0.8 to the measured total calcium for every 1 gram per deciliter drop in albumin below 4. Elevated total corrected calcium and or ionized calcium requires further workup. Speaking of workup, this PTHD scientist has worked up some new flavors for the Calcium brand, and she's promoting them with her head held high to represent the hypercalcemia diseases associated with high PTH. Because PTH raises serum calcium levels, it's normally suppressed when calcium is elevated. So you'll want to check parathyroid hormone levels and see if PTH is contributing to the hypercalcemia. Of course, this scientist is proud of her work. It took first place. A reminder that primary hyperparathyroidism comes first, since it's the most common cause of PTH-dependent hypercalcemia. Parathyroid adenoma is the most frequent culprit. Tertiary hyperparathyroidism from CKD is an additional cause of PTH-dependent hypercalcemia, hence the three tasty samples served up on a kidney-shaped dish. Gosh, I love samples.